All right, Ms. Goodell, can you hear me okay? Yes. So why don't we take a couple of minutes of a recess just to test, make sure we've got the sound working before we continue the, any real conversation. Um, Mr. Reininger, is this better for you from me speaking? Um, a, a little easier to understand, um, but I, I, I could make out what you were saying before, Chair. Um, there's a little bit of an echo in the current form, but I can hear you either way. The, the only two people that were very, very difficult to decipher were Dr. Demick and Mr. Webb, who were the people farthest from the center mic. Except, and I just said, Dr. Dr. Noonan was clear before for me, his voice projects, projects quite well. The teacher and me, Mr. Reidinger. Mr. Reidinger, is that any better? Yes. Okay. I will keep my headset on so that I can be heard by Mr. Reidinger remotely since everybody else can hear me live. Uh, and that minim minimizes the chance of us uh, hearing a very loud squeal. <laughs> All right. Um, Dr. Dimmick, will you do this for Mr. Reidinger? Hi, Phil. How are you? Is it working? Okay. All right. And Mr. Webb? Hello, Bill. We're good. <laughs> All right, Mr. Brett, is that working better? All right. All right, thank you. Um, I think we're all ready to get back to going. Okay, so we'll, we're done with that little recess. Let's get back on, on this. Um, so my question that I was asking is, um, do people feel comfortable with a, a limited period of time? Ms. Litton brought up that in, in the days before we were under the pandemic and the emergency order, we would, if people came physically present, they would, we would keep going until we had hit the numbers, number of people in the room. Um, I'm suggesting that we certain, we consider at least as a transitional step, sticking with a, with a roughly 30 minute period of time, um, so that we can we can have a to both a risk mitigation, but it's also a time strategy. So I don't know how people feel about that. Ms. Downs. Okay, thank you. Other thoughts on this one? All right. Um, unless I hear an objection, then I'm going to take it as a general sense that a 30 minute window, three minutes per comment, and we go as many as, as uh, people can, and people need to register in advance, and then we go as many as we can in that 30 minutes. So I'm looking at you, Mr. Reitinger, to make sure that, that you're okay with that too. Okay. So really this comes down to the question, I guess, just finally, if we do put a small number at the beginning and see how it goes, is that raise your level of comfort enough, Dr. Dimmick? Yeah. Okay. So then I'm just gonna say this back to everyone and make sure that we are all in agreement and I'm gonna be looking for a sense that people are nodding and, and, and so on. And if I get something wrong, don't nod and raise the objection so that we catch that. So we will have our meeting, our, our work sessions and our meetings here in hybrid mode in the cafetorium. Members and staff can, will be in hybrid mode. Um, you can be here physically. If you need to be in remotely, you come in remotely via Zoom. Um, we'll stream our work sessions and our meetings publicly uh, via YouTube like we've been doing. Um, we, would, uh, we will allow uh, public attendance during meetings, but a small number. Um, the number that I heard nominated was no more than 10 uh, to start. And we'll have to look and see if, um, if there's some other restriction that means it maybe needs to be a little bit lower, but certainly no more than 10. Um, everyone who comes in person would need to register in advance. Uh, and part of that registration would be to tell us also whether they intend to make a public comment or not. Um, we would, Everyone coming would need to wear a face covering at all times while they're in the building. Um, they would need to follow the phys physical distancing requirements that, uh, that we are and all of the other health and safety protocols for our reopening plan. And we would be having temperature screenings as a requirement for coming into the building and anyone who doesn't pass that would not be allowed to come in. Um, Ms. Minson and I will have to work on the appropriate language for dealing with situations in which someone 
comes in and then chooses not to comply with the health and safety requirements, but we will start with taking a recess in the meeting and dealing with the situation as necessary. But Mr. Reidinger, I take your caution and we will definitely have, uh, definitely work those details out. And then overall public comment, we would return to our practice of having live public comment during our meetings. Uh, during work sessions, people would certainly be able to submit, um, submit written comments, um, but we would not read those into the record. We would post them to board docs and, and they'd be available, but we wouldn't read them into the record. And then um, we would require people to register in advance to let us know, partially because that way we can figure out how much space we need and partially so that people can get the links uh, to comment on Zoom and we can figure out how many commenters we have. And it would be a 30 minute period at the beginning of the meeting as we've been doing since June. Um, so is that, I think that's basically the, the plan. And I'm looking to make sure if there are nods, disagreements. Okay, and Mr. Rodinger, you have your hand up. Not a, not a disagreement at all, just a note, something I'm sure the administration would do anyway, but, um, and this might've been done at the, uh, at the public comment session, but to, to map out the areas where the 10 seats or whatever the number will be to make sure they meet um, requirements and sort of, there has to be a rule or there likely should be a rule that the seats don't get moved. Um, so the room needs to be configured for all of that, but I'm sure that would be done. Absolutely, we would, uh, we would put markings on the floor and make sure they don't get moved. They'd stay within a box. All right, then, um, I, uh, are you, uh, assuming there was no objection and you said there wasn't, I'm going to take a nod then, Mr. Reitinger, that you're okay. All right, so that'll be the mode going forward. Now, we need to communicate this to the public, and so we will, we will do that um, in a variety of mechanisms, one of which is, now that we've said this, it's, it's out there, people can see it. Um, I will work on uh, work on a write-up of this, and uh, and Mr. Brett, um, if we can work on putting, uh, you know, when you're put, you've been putting out meeting summaries, it will put something together that might be good to consider for that um, for the next one. And then I think as uh, all other communication mechanisms that we can do make sense, and of course it shows up in the public meeting notice on the website, so people know how this is going to be working out as well. So we'll take care of that communication process. I'm looking to make sure that everybody's okay. All right, thank you, everyone. Um, I think that's uh, I think that brings that subject uh, forward and and allows us to to know how we're going to be moving forward for uh, for this. This will kick in on November 10th, which is our next meeting. So that's also the uh, the day that uh, uh, the reopening for the elementary schools begins, and we bring back the K K and three. Um, on the November 10th. So I think that that all lines up nicely. All right, thank you. So now we move down to 3.03 .03, uh, school calendar discussion and Dr. Noonan, I'll be looking toward you. Thank you, Chair Anderson. And again, good evening, everybody. Um, this evening, we um, can everybody hear me okay? All right, good. Um, this evening, um, our hope is that we can engage you in a conversation and ask for your guidance on um, our upcoming school calendar discussion. Um, as, as you all know, last year was a, a relatively unique year. Um, seems like every year is unique right now, but this was particularly unique with respect to the calendar insofar as we got into a longer conversation about whether we should have before Labor Day or after Labor Day. And tonight's conversation really isn't about whether or not we start before or after Labor Day. But we are actually <coughs> seeking to um, around some very specific items that we'd like to discuss. So um, the so goal for tonight's discussion is to really gain your input about the following. First is the calendar adoption, um, whether or not you all have an interest in doing a one-year calendar or a two-year calendar. Um, also, we'd like to ask your input on um, adjustments and last is um, on the timeline of uh, the calendar. So currently, our timeline has been, um, since I arrived even, uh, we did the calendar in, um, 
All right. So uh, we did the calendar in um, the December timeline, so for, de for December adoption. And so I know that there were some questions about whether or not that was the right timeline, whether it was to go, should go earlier or not go earlier. So if we go to the next slide, I have a couple of um, districts that I wanted to share with you that are just for comparison purposes only, just to give you a sense of sort of what um, some of our surrounding jurisdictions are doing um, with respect to adoption. So I wanna start with Arlington County. Um, Arlington County adopted their calendar for 2020, 2021 school year. That's this school year in February um, of last year, um, which was much later than we adopted our calendar. Um, and they do a one year only calendar in, uh, uh, in Arlington. Um, under, under that adoption uh, piece, there's some information about holidays. Um, and there are a number of holidays that uh, Arlington um, recognizes that are the same and one that is different. Uh, so for example, um, the Friday before Labor Day, because of the change in the state uh, legislation that said if we started before Labor Day, we had to give um, either the Friday off or have a four day weekend, um, they do the Friday before. So just like us, they give the Friday before uh, Labor Day. Additionally, they, um, they do as a non-student day, Indigenous Peoples Day or Columbus Day. Uh, and for us this year, that was a teacher work day. Um, election day is not a student day, um, just like it isn't for us here in the city of Falls Church. And then they, what's different in Arlington is that they do give Veterans Day as a holiday. Um, and, and that is different. And they have not adopted their calendar for next year yet. So then if you look at Fairfax County's calendar, uh, Fairfax County um, does a two-year adoption. Um, so they have adopted their um, calendar for um, next year. Um, but uh, there are some things that they have done a little bit differently with respect to some, some things are same, some are different with respect to holidays. So they also do the Friday before Labor Day as required by the state. They do Indigenous Peoples Day. They do Election Day. Um, but they are having currently a conversation about adding religious holidays um, into their calendar. And on September 3rd, the school board voted to discuss re uh, revisions at a future work session. So they, they have kicked that uh, conversation down the line a little bit um, and have not yet adopted their 21-22 calendar. They have their calendar for next year already. Um, I'm sorry, um, they do not have their calendar for next year uh, yet. And so they are gonna continue to talk about it at an upcoming work session. So we are in many ways sort of ahead of the curve here in terms of trying to figure out how we wanna move forward. So the questions, and I'm gonna go through all of these slides and then we'll come back if that's okay. So let me start with um, the first question and that is, do you wanna adopt a year, a year calendar or do you wanna adopt multiple year calendars? And I think the options that are before you um, it, it, just in terms of real operational structure would be a one year or a two year. I suppose we could look at a three year calendar, but I do think doing three years out becomes a little bit more complicated with respect to when testing windows are um, and some other operational needs. So we could, we could do a schedule or a, a calendar for next year, or uh, if it's the board's will, we would be happy to do a, a two year calendar. The next thing is about potential adjustments for holidays. Um, the state recently adopted new legislation and the governor signed it into law that election day is now a holiday. And so is Juneteenth. Um, just like any other state holiday, um, recognized holiday, we are not required to give that day off. It can be a teacher work day, it can be a student day, but oftentimes we recognize these days as um, as days. So for example, Indigenous Peoples Day um, was a teacher work day this year, but we didn't have students. Veterans Day for us is a, is a day of school um, and, and the like. Um, so there are two new holidays though that have come into play that I just wanted to put on your radar. Um, but there are some other holidays that you may want to revisit. One is Indigenous Peoples Day or Columbus Day. And how do you as a, as a board want to handle that day? How do you want to handle Veterans Day going forward? And then there are a number of religious holidays, um, given the pluralistic community that we live in, that you all may wanna also consider as additional days off. Um, the first is Eid, the second is Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and also Diwali. Um, those are obviously some of the high holy days for each of those respective religions. Um, we did not include, for example, Ramadan in there because it's a month, 